The Birmingham Stallions have won their third consecutive pro football spring title. What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Thank you for watching our live reaction to the UFL championship game in which Skip Holtz's Birmingham Stallions beat the San Antonio Brahmas in St. Louis 25 to 0. And what started out as a defensive contest quickly became something that got out of hand. Basically, in the second quarter, when Adrian Martinez really started to run on his own and hand the ball to Ricky Persons. Ricky Persons goes 44 yards that basically opened up the game and then put them in a position to score their first touchdown. Come back with their next possession, they score another. Kayava Tazino comes up big with a forced fumble after that, 16-0. to zero. You get the ball back, you go up by another score, it's 22-0. to zero. And at that point, I watched Wade Phillips spike his headset. I had seen the Brahma defense come off the bench in anger at his offense, I saw the starting quarterback, Chase Garber, get the hook for Quentin Dorbity. And still, we were having some fisticuffs there at the end. We had some emotions flare. It looked a little messy in the latter part of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. But this is a sport, and this is a league, where nobody's truly out of it, or so we think. And I've been telling people for all year, you should be getting to a television with seven minutes left to go in a UFL game because anything can happen with the scoring. But it just did not feel like it was going to happen for the San Antonio Brahmas in this game. Now, full credit to the Brahmas for getting here because they got here with the number one scoring defense in the entire league. They give it up more than 20 points in a game just once. 31-24 loss to the Battlehawks that they avenge in the XFL championship game in this same arena, the Dome at the America Center. And then here come the Birmingham Stallions with the number one scoring offense who did it without throwing the ball all the way down the field, but by dashing, beating up, this Brahma defense, something we hadn't seen from anybody all year. And on the offensive side for the Brahmas, we did not get to see the rush attack that was so good against the Battle Hawks at any point. They rushed for over 200 yards against the Battle Hawks in the XFL championship game. In the first half alone, they had 31 yards rushing. Chase Garbers looked like he did not like the play calls he was getting. At one point, we saw him talking with Quentin Dorbity on the sideline, talking about, hey, we can't be throwing the ball this many times. It was 12 in a row that they had dropped back to pass. Really... They went away from what got them there, which I thought was Anthony McFarlane. We didn't see much of John Lovett in this game, but shout out to the Birmingham Stallions, particularly the defense, because A, the defense had been the weakest part of the Skip Holtz era uh, coming into this season. It was a bend, don't break defense, and the offense was going to go have to outscore people, and they've been able to do that, right? Having won two legacy USFL championships, doing it that way. But this season, it felt like John Chavis had a defense finally was able to attack in the way that he'd always wanted to attack. He had outstanding players on that defensive line, and Carlos Davis, who I think is the best nose tackle in the league. He had Taco Charlton, a former Michigan Wolverine and Dallas Cowboy, coming off the edge. He had guys like Kyova DeZeno running around making plays, Demarcus Gates running around making plays, and then he had stalwarts, guys that you could just depend on, like JoJo Tillery, who had been a part of that defense for the last three years, and a guy that Skip Holtz calls a leader on that team. And when it wasn't going well for the offense— in the first half, we got to see Skip Holtz go, okay, cool, fine. I'm not able to get on the same wavelength with my quarterback for the second week in a row. And rather than give him the hook, he decided, I'm just going to hand the ball to the tailbacks and let the defense try to get us a lead. And that's what it was. The first five possessions for the Brahmas ended in punts. Okay? It's one thing for the Birmingham Stallion offense to do what it normally does, which is score 25 points right on their average, right? It's another thing. For the Birmingham defense to hold their opponent scoreless. And it felt like toward the end of the game, they really wanted to hold that down. Running around making tackles in ways in which, if you got the game won, perhaps you don't, right? The way I like to put this in perspective, though, is what Skip Holtz has managed to accomplish here in three years. In the history of North American football, we have seen three three-peats. The first one. Vince Lombardi's NFL Green Bay Packers won the NFL championship once and then back-to-back -back Super Bowls to go three in a row from 1965 to 1967, okay? Then, in the Canadian Football League, the Edmonton Elks, Eskimos then, but Elks now, understand what I'm saying, and Hugh Campbell won five consecutive Grey Cups from 1978 to 1982, and then we hadn't seen it. We had not seen a pro football team win three consecutive championships. Not Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to try to equal this feat this year, but only after having won the last two Super Bowls. 
We could talk about what this might mean in college terms, but I think that's missing the point. Pro football is totally different. It's a different sport. And in a league like the UFL, where you can count on at least 35% of your roster being turned over, either because they don't want to re-sign or because they got to where they were going, which is the NFL, you have to rebuild this thing all over again. I've said it all year. If you win two in a row, you're pretty damn good. You win three in a row, you're a dynasty. And that is what Skip Holtz has managed to build in Birmingham. He and general manager Zach Potter are on for big things. Zach Potter, who is 23 years old and maybe the best kept secret, well, it's not a secret anymore. I wrote about him a couple years ago and I've been writing about him for three years. Now people might start to listen. Is one of the best personnel people that anybody I've talked to has ever met. All that dude does is eat, sleep, and drink personnel. As a matter of fact, defensive coordinator Corey Chamlin, who stepped in for John Chavis, who was out for the rest of the season with health issues, the way he put it to me was, look, you could have a conversation with Zach about not personnel, but it ain't going to go very far. It's going to come back to personnel pretty quick because that is what this guy is about. And he's been that way since he got his start at Iowa Western, raised up by Matt Lubick at Nebraska. He's going to finish with his degree in December. And then I would not be surprised to find out that he is in somebody's NFL front office and on a fast track to being the guy in a draft room, making those decisions himself, trying to build a winner at the highest level because that's who Zach Potter is. Skip Holtz, who's in his 60s, had picked out this protege to help him build what he thought was an exciting uh, opportunity for him in pro football. He'd never been in pro football before. He got his first head coaching job in 1994. He had been an offensive coordinator on a Notre Dame team that won a national championship. And he'd been a pretty damn good college football coach. Left La Tech after his first losing season in five, right? Had made five out of six last bowl games. And then came into the USFL blind. Thinking, okay, cool. I got an opportunity to do it my way. I got an opportunity to do it with a young guy who can keep up with me. And let's see if we can't go build a winner. And that is what they have done. I don't know that it's going to really land for Skip Holtz the way I'm putting it down for you. But when I say three in a row in pro football, I hope that resonates. I hope that means something to you. Because the way that I think about it is I didn't get to see three peats. I didn't get to see the Dallas Cowboys win multiple championships more than once, right? I got to see what Jimmy Johnson was able to do, what Barry Switch was able to do, couldn't do it three times in a row. I kind of got to see it with USC. I never got to see it in the NFL. I haven't got to see it in the CFL. I got to see it in the UFL. We had Tom Brady joining the booth for the first time, right? I, it, why does it just kept? Tom Brady's first appearance in a broadcast booth was at the UFL championship game alongside Kurt Menefee and Joel Klatt. I'm really looking forward to what he can contribute as an analyst in that booth. He's going to see things that we don't see, and he's going to see them all in one go. One of the things that I find remarkable, particularly about Joel, is his ability to see it all in the same picture. It's quarterbacks. Quarterbacks can see it all. They see the wheels that are the safeties moving. They also see the defensive line and see the hold. I have to try to start with the safeties and work back. And that's as a dude that grew up playing quarterback. He sees it. He knows what you're thinking. He knows how you're thinking about it. He knows how to set this up for the audience in a way that, well, he's going to teach you something and he's going to pull your eyes to something you don't necessarily know about. So he's going to teach you what you don't know and you're going to discover something new because he's in the booth. I think Tom Brady's going to have an opportunity to do that from the jump. And we've got a little bit of that during the first half of the UFL championship game. And he is handing out the trophy to the Birmingham Stallions. That's the UFL's inaugural champions. Uh, really fantastic stuff here, man. I'm nine and one, 10 and two, or excuse me, 11 and one, 10 and two, 11 and one, first three years in pro football. Looking forward to what the UFL is going to provide us in 2025. Perhaps someone, anybody, might be able to unseat the Birmingham Stallions as they are spring football, pro football's first dynasty in 50 years. All right, that is going to do it for this instant reaction show to the UFL championship game. We will see y'all pretty soon. Deuces. If you like what you've seen, Consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.